Hey guys, and welcome to Doing Things Dan's Way. So today, this is my neighbor's uh, 2003 Toyota Camry. And as you can see, the headlights on this thing have not been touched in a really long time. They look completely yellow and oxidized. The headlights at night are just really dull. Uh, the, the light is being scattered all over the place because of all the oxidation that's on here that you can see. Now, what I've done is I picked up a just a simple headlight restoration kit off of Amazon. I'll stick a link down below if you want to grab the same one. And so this guy takes that and turns it into this. So the process here is pretty simple. You go through several layers of sandpaper and then you use a, uh, a surface prep treatment a couple different times, as well as a final clear coat. And what the clear coat does is it covers and gives a UV protection to the plastic that you don't get if you just sand and polish. This kit has all the sandpapers, the polishing pads, the polishing cream, uh, and the clear coat uh, as well, and the surface prep. It has everything you need in this one nice little box for less than 20 bucks uh so it's, it's it's a good deal and for less than an hour you can turn this into that so if you haven't seen the other videos on this series i've so far i've done the, the bunch of suspension work under this so there are links in the videos up here for that uh for both the uh, the tie rod links the sway bar bushings and the struts being replaced and that got rid of a lot of the clunkiness up front so if you haven't seen those you can hit those videos up as well but for today let's get the headlights looking better Okay, let's get started using this Sylvania headlight restoration kit. So in the box, you get everything you need, except I've added some, just some uh, masking tape here. So you get three different kinds of sandpaper, 400 grit, 1000 grit, and 2000 grit. Uh, you get a polishing compound, which is obviously finer than even the 2000 grit sandpaper is. You get a surface activator and you get the UV clear coat. And this is kind of key to the whole process to keep this process from deteriorating over the next year or so. Uh, you also get some application towels. So let me just tell you, walk you through the steps of this process. Step one is I use some masking tape to go ahead and mask off the whole surface you can see here. Now the beauty of doing this is I don't have to worry about sanding too far and actually scuffing my paint. Because the last thing I want to do is have a clear headlight and a bunch of scratch marks around my light because I wasn't careful enough with the sandpaper. So this is just peace of mind. It's not even in the, in the instructions, uh, but I find this really, really makes me feel better about doing the process. So once you have this all masked off, you're going to apply this surface uh, activator. Now the surface activator, the goal of this is to soften uh, the UV uh, damaged surface. Uh, and to also clean off any last residues that's on there. So you're going to spray this on, let it sit for 30 seconds, and then rinse it off, uh, and then go to the first step. The first step is to wet sand with the 400 grit sandpaper. So you know, just fold this in half, and you are going to you know, get this wet, get the surface really wet, and you're just going to go to town with this 400 grit sandpaper. Now you want to hit every edge and every corner of the light across the entire surface. This is going to take at least five minutes of sanding and you're going to expect to see as you keep rinsing and rinsing it, the, the residue from your sanding should go from a yellow pasty color to more of a, just a, a, a light, uh, clear white color of kind of a creamy residue. That's just the actual uh, plastic uh, polycarbonate material being uh, taken off. So now that we have this done, it should take at least five minutes. We're gonna wipe the whole surface down. We're gonna let it dry and look at the surface. It should be completely kind of a white, uh, you know, hazy color. It's not gonna be clear at all. Don't worry about that. We'll get there. But it's going to be, uh, what you're looking for is to make it sure there's no more yellow left behind and that there is no more like uh, clear spots or areas that don't look like they've been sanded as much as the other. So if you find any spots like that, just go ahead and wet it again and sand it some more. And then once that step is done and everything looks consistently uh, kind of uh, scratched, <laughs> if you will, uh, opaque, we're going to switch over to this thousand grit. So same thing, so, thousand grit sandpaper. We're gonna fold this in half and we are going to wet the surface, wet the light, and we're gonna go to town with the thousand grit sandpaper. Now again, spend another five minutes or so doing the, the thousand grit over the entire surface. Make sure you get all the edges, which again is why I like the masking process. So once all the edges are done, now we're going to rinse it all off again, take a look at it. It should look consistently clear. The, the hazy, there should be a little bit more clarity to it. You should be able to see inside the light a little bit more than with just the 400 grit. And now we're going to switch over to the 2000 grit. Do it all over again, exact same procedure. Uh, get it wet and run through the whole, the whole light. Now, once we have this whole light completely done with the 2000 grit and we've rinsed it off and we've checked it and everything's good, and let it let it dry because it's when it's wet you can't really see the the texture of, of the surface. You'll be able to see through it a little bit better. 
Okay, now we're gonna move on to the next step. Next step is to use the clarifying compound. And this is basically like a polishing compound. It has, it has a grit to it, you can feel a grit in, in it. And that grit deteriorates as you use it. So apply you know, a, a couple beads of this and go to town with a polishing rag, uh, some, some kind of clean rag, uh, and try not to use the whole rag so you're not like soaking up the compound in your dry fabric. Like just use one area of the rag. But as you polish it, the, the beads of grit that are inside the compound will break down. Now, what you want to do there is you don't want to just keep applying it and going over the exact same spot. You want to go over the whole area, you know, the whole area, and when you're done, don't apply a little bit more and keep going for just a moment because it has to break down. So once you got the whole area done, again, just take another five minutes or so of, of polishing with this, wipe the whole surface down, and you should be able to at that point you know, rinse it off, dry it off, and it should look uh, something like this. It's not clear, so we're getting close to clear. Now the next step here is we're going to, after you dry it all off and you should have a very you know, even, very light haze to it, uh, that's totally normal. Uh, the next step is we're going to use the surface activator one more time. So we're going to apply that surface activator over the whole surface. And by applying the activator then, okay, now that's going to soften uh, the surface and prep it for the clear coat, which is the final step. Now we're going to thoroughly rinse this whole thing with water, get all the clear coat, all the polish off, all the UV activator, everything, get it re really clean. And at this point, now we can use the, the clear coat. Now, the, the suggestion here is to do both sides at the same time while you're going through all of these steps. Just go back and forth between the two. You don't have to work on just one car at a time. That's not, I'm sorry, one light at a time. That's not, not necessary. Um, in fact, you don't want to have, you don't want to apply the clear coat on one side and then start sanding the other side. Uh, in fact, I would suggest you get your car, even the, just the front of your car, inside your garage where there's less wind so that you don't have little particles of dust flying around while the clear coat is wet. So for this last step, let's say you've done both sides, you're, you're good to go, you've cleaned everything off really good. You can go ahead if you want to and remove the masking if you think you're going to uh, damage the, the, the surface or touch it. Um, when you're peeling it off. But in this case, I'm just gonna leave it on. And what we do is we take this blue uh, rag, and I've already used it once, unfortunately, just for demonstration purposes, but you fold this into a nice, just simple crease like this. And you're basically just gonna pour a line of clear coat on it, get it nice and heavy on there. And you're just gonna wipe this on the surface, as you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just using like a, a just a, a slightly overlapping stripe here. And you don't wanna go back over it because this dries very quickly. And if you go back over it, it actually won't settle down and it'll actually leave all kinds of ugly little lines in it. So keep the surface that you're touching very wet. And you just wanna go over the whole surface once, making sure you're going from edge to edge. And if you see any spots you missed, uh, you can just try and touch up just that one little area, but just be careful because you can leave marks that will show up once it's thoroughly dry. Uh, I would suggest if you miss some spots, let the whole thing dry and come back and do a second coat. Um, but here you can see I'm just finishing up the last of these stripes going across here. And now it, this is gonna be dry to the touch in about an hour. And it suggests uh, a, a six hour dry time and at least 24 hours before you get any water on it. So don't do this right before it's going to rain. Okay, everyone, that's a wrap. Uh, as you can see, this light now looks like the one over here. That process isn't too bad. Uh, it will definitely uh, wear on your fingers a bit, so take breaks if you need to. So if you're familiar with a channel called Project Farm, there's a link up here. He did a review on a bunch of different headlight restoration kits, and this was the top pick, which is why I grabbed it. So uh, hit up that video uh, as well. There's a link down below again for uh, Amazon to give this to you, you know, next day uh, for a decent price. As you can see, this looks really nice and clear. It looks nothing like it did before. The light will shine through this very clear so this will really brighten up the view uh, down the road at nights. So if you want to see more, there's a playlist up here of all the videos in this series on the Camry and the different repair videos I've done. Go ahead and smash on my face right here if you want to subscribe and that way the next video drops, you'll get a notification of that as well. So whether it's cars or something else you do around the house, DIY, that's what this channel is all about. This is Doing Things Dan's Way. Be blessed.